All right, everyone, uh, good evening and welcome to the June 27th meeting of the uh, Town of Arlington Redevelopment Board. So this evening we have in front of us um, one environmental design review special permit hearing, um, an update on the Director of Planning and Community Development search, and as always, we will end our meeting with an open forum. So um, I will uh, begin by taking attendance for the record. Uh, Steve Revla. Here. I'm Rachel Zemberry. Gene Benson. Present. And Kim Lau. Here. Um, Melissa Tentopoulos, who is our uh, fifth member of the board, is running a bit late. Um, so we are going to actually take agenda item number two, the update on the Director of Planning and Community Development search first. Um, and uh, then we'll move into the hearing. Um, if Melissa is able to join us before the hearing. Uh, she'll be able to um, to meet and, re and review and, and vote um, potentially on the uh, the outcome of our hearing this evening. Um, if not, we will uh, deliberate as the, the four of us and uh, move forward from there. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead with agenda item number two, which is the uh, update on the Director of Training and Community Development Search. And we have with us um, Kelly Leimer, who is the Assistant Director of Planning uh, for the Department of Planning and Community Development. Thank you, Rachel. Um, so just an update on the search. The position was posted in um, mid-May, and we've received a number of applicants. I talked with HR this morning, and it sounds like there will be preliminary interviews with five selected applicants on Thursday of this week. Um, the selection committee, or the, the interviewing committee, includes Rachel Zemberry, also includes Jim Feeney, who's a deputy director, or deputy town manager, and then Karen Malloy. Um, so after that first round of interviews, the committee will determine if they want to continue with the second round of interviews with any of the candidates, and at that point we'll know more about the timeline. If the committee is not satisfied with any of the candidates, then we'll continue to post the position and seek out additional candidates. So what, what's, what's our right to know who the candidates are? Well, at this point, um, so Karen had mentioned that at this point in the interviewing process they redact all the names oh. and addresses of the candidates to eliminate any potential for bias. So we don't know sex or gender or ethnicity or any sort of potential indicators. But you will on We will on Thursday. So yeah. um, yeah. I can certainly ask um, Carolyn when that will be made okay. public. So I'm more than happy to Great. follow up Thanks. on that. Um, and Jean, you had asked a question um, in our previous meeting about the timing with this and the, obviously the selection of the town manager. Mm -hmm. And um, for those people who are joining us who, who don't know, um, the uh, select board um, and the town have selected uh, Sandy Pooler to move into the town manager position. So um, we have a town manager now who can be a part of the excellent. process, which is excellent. Mm -hmm. And I will follow up with Carolyn regarding um, when the candidates will be made public. And if I could just add one other Sure. Um, so we also, Ali Carter gave her notice on Monday oh. of last week, so we are using our economic development coordinator. Um, so we will be, um, we will be posting that position. I have a conversation with Sandy about the timing and how we want to post that versus the new director position. Hmm. I'm very sorry to hear that. And you too. I know. I, yeah. And I, whatever we can do to support you in the department, <laughs> please let us know. Because I know it's She will be very, very sorely missed. And yes. She's much beloved by the business community here, and by the arts and culture community, and everybody else she works with. So. Can I ask um, what her, when, when her. Yeah, um, so she is going on to become the economic development director in local. Okay. Not the same organization as Jenny, so she's, she's working for the city, city. Okay. and uh, I know that they just adopted a transformative uh, development district through mass housing, there's a lot of really great economic development work there that she'll be able to direct to show the staff. And how much longer will she be with us here My in Arlington? July 8th. July 8th, yeah. okay. Well, we'll all send her a note and wish her well. Which was the time I uh, Sandy Pooler, who was the deputy town manager. And there's a contract for the end of June 2023, right? I, that I'm not sure of. Yeah, end of June 2023? I believe it's for a year, that's what I 
Yeah, and then I think they're going to do a town manager search during the time. Is that what you understand? That's what I understand. Yeah, I. That's my basic understanding. They're, uh, they're, they're hiring an executive recruiter, and um, it looks like they're, it's going to be a, a long effort. <laughs> All right. Um, any other questions for Kelly on the um, uh, search for the uh, department head? for the Department of Planning Community Development. Okay, um, and that will um, conclude agenda item number two. Um, I did have a note from, uh, before I move to back to agenda item number one, from Karen Kelleher, with, who's the chair of the Arlington Affordable Housing Trust Fund, with a reminder um, for those people who have not taken the affordable housing survey, um, to please do so. The survey will close on Thursday, June 30th. And it will be one of the tools that the um, Arlington Affordable Housing Trust Fund um, pretty will use to inform their initial action plan. Anything else, Kelly, that you have on no, that that's item? No, the survey will be up through, actually we'll probably extend it to the weekend because they're doing an okay. ACMI interview on Wednesday. Um, but the survey will help inform the priorities of the trust. And then after the survey closes, we will be moving on to focus groups and the sessions. Great, and for the folks who are watching this, where can they find the survey. It's uh, tinyurl.com slash affordable housing Okay, great. Thank you very much. All right, um, so at this point, we'll go ahead and move. Okay. Sorry, go uh, ahead, uh, please. Uh, we just got an email the other day from the Open Space Committee about reviewing the Open Space Plan. Yes. Do we have a plan or are we going to do it individually? They will be uh, joining us on uh, Kelly is working to coordinate um, to see if they can join us on July 11th for our next hearing date um, as an agenda item. So hopefully they'll be able to present the plan. We'll be able to provide comments or feedback and um, vote on whether or not to endorse the plan. Great. Great. Anything else? All right. Uh, so let's go ahead and move to our public hearing, um, which is environmental design review uh, for a special permit. Docket number 3702 for 464 Massachusetts Avenue. Um, we have the applicant with us here this evening. Fantastic, great. Um, so uh, we will uh, welcome you to provide up to 10 minutes for an introductory presentation. Um, after that, we will um, have a few minutes of uh, questions for you. Uh, we'll kick it over to Kelly first, though, um, to provide any commentary that you'd like to on the uh, memo that was prepared by the Department of Planning and Community Development. And after that, we will take um, questions from anyone who's ready. Great. Great. So, Kelly, would you like to kick it off? Sure. sure. Can I just say one thing? Please, go ahead. Uh, since there's only four board members here, you'll need all four board members. Yes, that say, is correct. Say yes, okay? You get approval. Unfortunately, we don't have our fifth board member here. So I just want to go with that understanding that just getting three of us is not enough to get approval. Go ahead. Okay. Well, well, we'll kind of circle back to all of that after we hear your presentation and take questions and comments from, from those folks. No, just in case he wants to withdraw and present another day when you're five members. Right. Give them the option. Fair. Fair. I'm going to go to that. Okay, great. Go ahead, Kelly. Um, so this is an application by Deep Cuts Deli. Um, they, have a, they already have it up, a location in West Medford, a very small storefront or commercial restaurant in West Medford, but they're looking to open a restaurant and brewery for seasonal fabrication at 464 Mass Ave. Um, this use, both uses are allowed in the B5 business district, so it's, it's an allowable use with a special permit. Um, I do want to note that in the staff memo we indicate um, that because the site was previously used for a restaurant, the continuation of a restaurant use does not require additional approval. Um, that is not correct. The restaurant use does require additional approval. It doesn't change the legal noticing for this hearing, so we're able to continue going forward. We just, I just did want to know, thanks to Jean Cosette, um, that we do need to actually include the decision to allow the restaurant use as part of the decision. Um, the applicant is also requesting a reduction of on-site parking to zero spaces. There are no spaces 
spaces provided right now. There were no spaces provided for the prior use, so this is just a continuation of the, of the lack of parking. Um, the board does have the authority to reduce this use to zero, um, especially given that this, there is on-street parking at Mass Ave and there is the Russell Common Lot that is fairly adjacent to the building. Um, the board also is reviewing uh, the two signs under section 6.2 signs. So the applicant is proposing to replace the two existing signs with two signs that are slightly smaller in size, but because those two signs are both wall signs, we do require those to be approved through a special permit as well. And then um, just want to clarify that, artis that the brewery is uh, categorized as artisanal fabrication um, in the business zoning district and that is an allowed use for the special permit. Um, there is no other, at this time, there is no other additional facade changes that are proposed as part of the restaurant. So the work is entirely in the interior of the restaurant with the exceptions of the signs. And that is, I think that summarizes everything mm -hmm. that we've seen here. Great, thank you. So I'll turn it over to you if you could introduce yourself and go ahead with your presentation, please. All right. <coughs>
Thank you so much for the presentation. I appreciate it. And um, really appreciate uh, such a creative use of the space, hopefully coming to Arlington. So um, what I'd love to do is um, ask uh, my colleagues on the board if they have any, any questions um, of you, any clarifications. And then um, what we'll do is we'll see if any of the folks who have joined us this evening um, have any commentary. And then we'll come back and we'll, um, we'll have a discussion um, as to um, you know, it, it, again, any any questions that we might have about um, being able to approve um, the application. Yep. Okay. Uh, so, Ken, why don't we start with you? All right. Um, well, I want to start off saying I'm very supportive of this project. Great. I, I think it's a great project. It's a good fit. It works of our uh, what we want to do in that area, and it's a, it's a good thing. Um, I do have a couple small questions. When you say you're not doing anything on the outside elevation of the building except for uh, modifications to the signs. I'm going to ask you, are you changing any of the uh, uh, egress or ingress doors uh, for the front door where there's a vestibule? Are you changing any of those doors or they stay the exact same configuration? Those are staying the same. Uh, the only modifications would be The one, the other entry, um, let's say uh, on the top of the page, we you should show that, right? Uh, are you changing anything there? Uh, uh, this entrance? Yes. Uh, we're not at the top. Because, I, I mean, I've been there a couple of times, a few yeah. times, when yeah. I just be a steakhouse, I go there all the time. Uh, I think I will go there because it's a brew house, too. <laughs> uh, that, door is further set in than the way you show them your drawings. Oh, very sensible uh, And I was wondering, did you show that door flush and brought out more so it was, uh, so that was your um, ADA access into this building? Yeah, I'll go back and double check that. Uh, and then I'll, I'll check what the clearances are. I do a lot of accessibility design work, so I know what the requirements are. Well, I'm asking you just because the lower entry at the bottom of the page mm -hmm. is not handicapped accessible because they're too tight. It, it, it doesn't work. 
because yeah. it's recessed currently. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, but if you if, but if you remodifying that door up the top there, which you call as the secondary means of egress, mm -hmm. to be more flush, and you see a, a buzzer there, that would, would suffice to be your handicap access, uh, accessible entrance mm -hmm. and exit. Uh, the only thing I don't recall is how flush the floor is to the sidewalk. Is that pretty much on level or do we have to create some sort of ramp in there? I'm not trying to create undue burden. I, that's why I'm asking you why I'm asking you. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, they are both, uh, I know they're both at sidewalk level. Uh, I haven't double checked what the slopes are. There's any small change there. But we have to have a flat room in front of the door, clear space, and clear door open space. Uh, but the, the intent is to bring it up to the code of compliance. So, do you feel that if we made a request that that secondary door, which you have ingress, is made to be handicap accessible. Is that something you would do? Um, I would do it as long as it's not something that requires a like, significant modification to the building. I don't think so. Looking yeah. at it, I'm by memory and everything else, but I'm just asking you for a commitment for you to do that, and we'll make that as a requirement. And then, if you feel like that is an undue burden, I would actually come back and, and, and make that request of us and we'll try to work something else. Yep, but, that's, that's but, what we're doing. but for now, I just, I just want to just make sure that it's accessible. And then my only last request, if it's not being too uh, undue burden on right now, is you're asking us to reduce parking to zero. I agree with you, that's fine. But will you be able to help us by placing a bicycle rack outside somewhere. Uh, I know that sidewalk is tight, but I'll, I'll let Steve and some of the other board members who are more expert in bicycling than I am. I, I, you know. But if we, if we can have a bicycle rack somewhere near this facility as a, as a gesture from you saying, hey, I, I think that would go a long way. Yeah, I, I'd be more than happy to put a bike It's just a rack. It's not like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think it's just the only thing is just with making sure we're in uh, compliance with the sidewalk clearances. That's what I'm trying to say right yeah. now. I'm not trying to say where. I'm just trying to say, you know, you, you, you will you willing to help us out with a bike rack. You, you will help us encourage bicycling at, at the center here. Oh, yeah. You know, I was, I've always been a bike here, so very big and a fairly place to play. And, um, I've, I've, you know, I built one room for myself and I designed for three others. That's my only two things, and I hope I will support this, and it's a great fit there, okay? Great, thank you. Gene, uh, any questions? Yes, thanks, and um, I agree. I have never been, I was never in Canada, so I don't have the same <laughs> experience that my colleague does, but we did get an email from um, an architect who says that he thinks that the doors are not ADA compliant. Oh. And it seems to me that I'm Christian Klein sent an email today. And it, it sort of seems to me, I don't care which door, mm -hmm. but that I would like to have one of the doors brought up um, to that code. Um, although I don't care if it's either door, as long as when you get into the building, it's fine. Mm -hmm. um, so I hope you can do that and you might have to work with the landlord about it. I don't know. Yeah, uh, it's, that's uh, going to be a code requirement. Uh, yeah. It's very incredible. Yeah, I, I mean, I like the idea of a, a bicycle rack outside. Um, although you're going to have to work with the town since it's a town sidewalk mm -hmm. on whether there's an appropriate place to put it. And we have standards for type of bicycle racks that are allowed oh. to be used in town. So you can ask um, Kelly or you can go on the website and find the guidance on bicycle racks. Um, we, you would be required to have internal bicycle storage, I believe, for employees. 
in the building? Um, that, would, that would again be something that the board could choose to right. waive or right. you could require. Right. So um, I think, I don't know if it's possible for you to include how many? In, I don't even have a chance to uh, We don't have that calculation. Yeah. I, mean, you can, I think there needs to be, I think probably one, but I haven't done the calculation, internal bike storage um, for staff, which you'd probably put in the basement. Yeah. Um, and since there doesn't seem to be any place in the building to have the bicycle requirements for visitors, yeah. having it on the sidewalk is the appropriate alternative if, if the town is okay. So I'm okay with that. Otherwise, there would be a bicycle requirement, which I don't think we can meet on this side. Yeah, so. yeah we can put a, a bicycle over here. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. One of our employees does drive a bike. Yeah, so, so yeah. Um, I think we're happy to have the staff review it and, and be comfortable. At least I am I'm comfortable um, with it. Um, Truck access is around the back, I mm -hmm. think. You put, how large are the trucks that are going to be coming in? Um, they're box trucks. Uh -huh. um, the normal ones aren't. I think they're like the, the 16 or 24 foot ones. Uh -huh. And that's just really for delivering the uh -huh. And we're only going to be getting you know, one or two pounds at a time. So they'll be able to come to, uh, there's, there's the auto body. Which is but, what I was going to mention. Yeah. Yeah. So we've been assured that they'll have full access to it. And the trucks will be able to turn around once they get down there so they won't have to back out? They should be able to back into that spot. You need to back in, Chief. Okay. If you don't back in, there's no way to, for them to, to unload the truck and bring yourself around the okay. truck. So they're going to have to back in. So they're definitely going to have to clear all the cars out that they have stored. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah anything that's obstructing. Yeah, I know exactly what it is. Yeah, that's what I knew. The cars were still been pretty regularly. A lot of cars were still there too. Oh yeah. I've been still there. Um, the only other thing I'd say about the signs is, as as um, Kelly mentioned, under our bylaw, you're only allowed to have one sign on the building. Mm -hmm. And while Tango had two, that was done before the bylaw. So I think what you can do to still meet the sign by law is to take that little emblem, I think, and move it over next to the name and probably stay within the size limit. But I'm not positive because I didn't take out a ruler and try to figure this no, out. No, I mean, you can still have the two signs under a special permit. Yeah, but I'm not going to agree with the second oh, sign okay. because... Yeah, Gene's no. trying to figure out how to make that one sign oh, so we can approve thank, it. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love the interpretation. Thank you. Yeah, so if there's a way to combine them so it's one sign, but I think it is because they're not that big, that would be approvable. I can't see approving it just for panel had it because we can't keep approving things that were under a different sort of bylaw. So I think um, I'd approve it if there's a way to turn it into um, one sign. Yeah. And, and, you're agreeable, I hope, to yeah, that. Yeah, that's totally and, that, and that's all I have. I, yeah, I, I just want to say, I think it's great that you'll be coming to town. I think it's a nice um, place to have your establishment. Great. Great. Thank you, Gene. Um, Steve, I'll look to you for any <coughs> questions or comments. Uh, I've got a couple. How are you planning to, in the brewery process, how are you planning to change the board? Uh, we're going to be using it as a water flow chiller, mm -hmm. uh, so it takes in cold water coming in one side with the hot port coming out the other side, mm -hmm. uh, and that goes, uh, more goes directly into the fermenter. Uh, the cold water that comes out with hot water now is then reflected in another tank. Oh, okay, so you're yeah. just basically cooling it off the end and then the side of Yeah, yeah, we take that off and then we use that as either strike water for the next batch or for I was just curious, uh, there are three 
have already asked you all of the questions that, that I had. The only thing I wanted to confirm um, with Kelly was whether or not, um, I believe that this applicant would need to have the exterior painting and the signage approved by the Historic Commission following right. so we'll any approval here. So we'll get on the agenda for Historic Commission approval or review of the signage and the painting. Okay, great. Yeah, I had uh, emailed them and the application Great. Um, well, that's the only other uh, question or comment that I wanted to make. Um, so I think uh, at this time what I'd like to do is open it up for um, public comment and um, uh, see if there's any public comment and then we'll uh, circle back up and, and uh, talk about next steps. Great. Great. Um, so if either one of you would like to speak this evening. All right. Thank you. Seeing none, we will close public comment. <laughs> Um, and Thank I'll you. just note that Melissa, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Melissa Tintopoulos has, has joined us. Um, unfortunately, you won't be able to weigh in on the, this hearing because we started before. Um, Could I have questions under public comment? 
you can have questions under public comment. So I will reopen public comment <laughs> and invite Melissa to, uh, to join us for public comment. Yeah, so I apologize for being late. I had a, another commitment, but um, so you may have already talked a little bit about this, but you know, kind of with the economic development lens, I'm curious how your thought process on this site in particular and, and maybe what was some of the factors in this location. Um, yeah, uh, we have been working for a lot of people who are trying to use a lot of our and that was, you know, the restrictions are going to be this year. Uh, our public sales start, you know, to move ahead and basically have a no growth application. Um, so that's when we started looking for some area we had. We wanted to stay close to where we Those are within the, the restrictions. Mm -hmm. um, and then I guess this is not really your purview, but I have been curious about um, the process for the park lots. Kelly, I know, I don't know if this would be appropriate, and would a business apply, or how that works? In our um, through, the, through the select board. So there's a permit process for applying for the park lot, um, mm -hmm. which would be allowable at this location if it's approved by the select board. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. Something we'll definitely need to do. We, we have one of that in our Oh, do you? Yeah, we have to do that whole process with them. And it's going to be huge for them. Yeah. I mean, if you, you know, in terms of general parking management and the requirements, um, I see like, the more activation on the street, the better, actually. I mean, it's like you have some opportunity for, you know, the shared parking that I support kind of through the center. So yeah. I think that's great. Mm -hmm. um, but thanks. Great. Thank all right, and we will close public comment and um, move back to um, any any uh, discussion within the board. So what I'll do is I'll run through the, the list that I was keeping of uh, conditions that, that I heard um, mentioned for um, approving this, this application. And then we can uh, talk about those, see if there are any others or um, if there are any um, revisions that we'd want the applicant to come back either to the board for or uh, work together with staff to address. Um, so the the first item I have is to um, ensure that the exterior painted and painting and signage are um, reviewed and approved by the Historic Commission. That a minimum of one of the two entrance doors on Mass Ave um, is uh, made ADA accessible. Um, and this is something that, um, you know, you mentioned that you have experience and, and can work within and you'll need to work with the um, building inspector as well for approval. If there are storefront modifications that are needed, unfortunately what we'll have to do is reopen this permit because that would be subject to um, review by, by the board and um, reapprove that. So. Um, I think what, what you'll need to do is, you know, it, it may be that, for example, the um, one that is the, the vestibule, you can perhaps modify that on the interior so that it's an interior modification, but again, you'll, you'll need to take a look at that and, and see what's necessary yep. there. Um, there was the request to add, Wait, sorry? Can we uh, sort of approve I, I to have it reviewed with staff? Reviewed with staff. We could, if, if we the, could if discuss the wall, that. If the, the door needs to move forward so that it would give it the accessibility. Because you're still trying to make it accessible. I just want to come back and slow you down another 
before March. If, if, again, we'll discuss that as the board, and if we feel comfortable with that direction um, to have them uh, review that, to, to have that reviewed and approved by staff, we can certainly okay. add that in. Okay. Um, I'll just finish running through the list, and sure. then we can, no, no, that's a great question, and we'll come back to that one for sure. Um, I'll just make a note to review this now. Um, there was the request to work with the town to locate an exterior bike rack on the sidewalk um, or in some location adjacent to the, um, to the uh, property um, to add a minimum of one internal bike storage rack for staff in the basement and to condense the signage into one sign that's in the location. Do you have the uh, storefront rendering up? Yeah, so that would be for the location over the main entrance. Yes, so to move the, um, the circular emblem over to, to that area, if that's a feature that you would want to keep. Great. Um, are there any other uh, conditions that I and, missed? And we're going to waive all the parking, the vehicle parking. And to... Correct, waive the requirement for uh, vehicle parking. Steve, did you have anything else I missed? Uh, no, I think you got it off. Could I just bring up the signage thing? Yes. Uh, I appreciate what Gene said about moving that dot over so it becomes one. Um, I understand why you put it over there. Mm -hmm. If we were just to reduce the size of the deep cut right now we have it at one one foot six mm -hmm. and just move them a little closer it's still having the two different planes but it's still counted as one sign because it's i mean this this is it's, it's two signs it's separated by i'm going to agree with gene on that one i think it's two signs Doki doki. <laughs> What, what we'll do, um, you could actually work together again. That won't need to come in front of the board. You can work with the Department of Planning and Community Development as long as it's within the allowable signage size and it's one sign. You can, you know, absolutely work on redesigning that to a to a um, design that works for you, and that can be approved together with yeah, staff. Yeah, I think maybe one other alternative that you might want to consider is that you would have up to two signs in the sign bylaw. So if there were an alternative, like an alternative sign type that you wanted to do and it met the dimensional requirements of that sign type, then we could explore that in the district with the staff out of the board's permission. Right, it's the two wall signs that are, yeah. right. Um, and just to confirm, these are, uh, these are, are lit through the external lighting that's currently there. Yeah, yeah. there's a uh, light. Okay. Great. Um, let's see. Any other? Any other uh, questions? No, I just like to see if we somehow reach a mutual agreement here, so that we don't have to have them come back here again. Let's work on a motion then. Uh, a motion to approve this. Um, with, the, with the following comments that you have just mentioned. Do you want me to say it all over again? Yeah, why what, what don't I um, just repeat them again um, so that Kelly has them and we make sure that we're all in alignment. Um, so uh, there's a motion to approve uh, docket 3702, 464 Massachusetts Avenue with the following special conditions that the exterior painting and signage um, is subject to review and approval by the Historic Commission. That a minimum of one of the two doors, uh, main entrance doors uh, on Massachusetts Avenue are ADA compliant. Um, any minor storefront modifications can be reviewed and approved together with the staff from the Department of Planning and Community Development. Um, that the applicant include a bike rack um, for uh, the public use uh, on the exterior at the sidewalk, uh, working together with the town for an appropriate location. 
that the applicant install a minimum of one internal bike storage rack for staff use in the basement, that the applicant uh, condense the signage into one wall sign, um, and uh, the final signage is to be reviewed and approved uh, with the staff of the Department of Planning and Community Development. Can I say one wall yes. sign that meets the bylaw requirements? Yes, that meets the requirements, the, the size and location requirements of the bylaw. Thank you, Jean. And um, the uh, board will um, grant the requested relief for reducing the vehicle parking down to zero at this location. So motion. So I'd like to make one yes. small revision. Yes. Uh, one interior bike parking rack, I would say one interior long-term bicycle parking space. Okay. One internal, long term. So we motion. <laughs> I'll second. So I just need to write that down. Bike parking space. Okay, and I'm sorry, there was a second. Great. Uh, so we'll take a vote for approval, starting with Steve. Uh, aye. Uh, Jean? Yes. Ken? Yes. And I have a yes as well. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thrilled to have you open your business in Arlington. Great. Thank you so much. So with that, we'll uh, close the public hearing for docket number 3702. Um, and at this time, we will um, open uh, for public forum. So any of you joining us this evening are welcome to <laughs> make any comments that you'd like. All right, uh, seeing, yeah, yes. Can Kelly just tell him when he thinks he's going to come? He will actually get the camera. Yes, yeah, so I will follow up with you tomorrow okay. with the, this typed up list of special conditions and then follow up on that historical commission, like getting on the agenda for that and then talking about the, uh, follow up with the um, separate bike parking guidelines, mm -hmm. just so that you know the types of bike racks. Um, but then we'll work on the decision tomorrow. The decision will be circulated among the board for signatures. Once we have the full set of signatures, we'll file that with the clerk, at which point the 20-day appeal period will begin. Mm -hmm. And after that 20 days, if the decision is not appealed, then our office manager will contact you and arrange a time for you to come and pick up the special time. Excellent. Okay. Great. Thank you. So uh, we'll close open forum, um, and I'll see if there is any new business uh, from the board. Any questions, comments? Okay. Do we, uh, do we have, sorry, yeah. no, have we planned on our uh, summer retreat yet? Uh, we have not planned a, a time for the summer retreat. I think we had initially said that we were um, hoping to um, wait until the new uh, planning director was um, named. And um, I think we had tentatively started to think about September. Okay. for that date, but um, I'm happy to send a, a note around and start collecting some availability uh, for a, a weekend date, and we can plan that. Okay. Um, and maybe what we can do is um, add that to our agenda for the July 11th meeting and uh, have a discussion there on, on a um, selection of a date, if that works. Unless, there's, unless you have other thoughts? No, no. I, okay. I just forgot all about what we talked about earlier. That's okay. Great. Fantastic. Um, so at this time, uh, I'd like to see if there's a motion to adjourn tonight's meeting. So motion. I will second. We'll take a vote, starting with Ken. Yes. Jean. Yes. Uh, Melissa. Yes. Steve. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Good night, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.